You, Isabella Perdomo? Yes, good evening. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Bella, and I am a seventh grader. I am here today to speak on behalf of my classmates and many other students just like me. This past Friday, in the middle of my algebra class, the phone rang, and my teacher had to stop her lesson to attend to the person on the other side of the call. This is quite unusual because my teacher's instructional time is very precious to her. She becomes extremely agitated when non-educational related activities, such as picture day, fire drills, assembly, etc., are scheduled during her very limited teaching time with us. She is under so much pressure to make sure we are prepared for all the assessments we will be asked to complete throughout the year that she cringes at the thought of anything taking our time away from learning. We waited patiently, and even though we overheard her tell the person on the other end of the call that she did not want to take the call at the time, for some reason, the call continued. I could see that my teacher was flustered by the call, even though she kept her composure at all times. I later found out through my mom that the call was from the school board. They were inquiring as to why my teacher was scheduled to speak at today's board meeting. Weren't they going to find out today anyways? Did they really have to interrupt our lesson for that? When I went home and told my parents about what had occurred in algebra class that day, they were both furious too. At first, I thought what had happened was wrong simply because it took away from my inst instructional time. But now I realize that I was wrong on so many levels. I asked my parents why the school board would call a teacher during class time to question her motives for speaking at a public hearing. My dad told me a story of when he was a five-year-old little boy in, in the communist country of Cuba where there was no freedom of speech. He said that the school would encourage the children to pay close attention to the conversations of the adults at their home and report back anything that was said against the government to their teachers. That is, the teachers would use the children to gather information from the parents' private conversations, which would then be used to convict their parents for supposed crimes against the government. Consequently, the participants, playing the role of their parents, would then be tried at a mock trial for their words. It is an almost unbelievable story, but he swears it is true. Fortunately, he now lives in America, and, and he enjoys freedom of speech guaranteed to us by the US Constitution. In fact, anyone choosing to speak at a public hearing, whether a student, teacher, parent, or other member of our community, has that unalienable right to speak freely without fear of punishment or harassment. So I ask you again, why did the school board interrupt my class to question my teacher about her speech today? Were they out to get information? Were they trying to intimidate her? or were they trying to suppress her speech? This, it's a good thing this is not a communist country. Thank you for your time. Please. Elizabeth Perdomo, is Elizabeth Perdomo here? Yes. Good evening, ma'am. How are you? Hello. Um, I'm requesting an additional three minutes, if that's okay. I have another speaker who's donating her minutes to me. Who's the other speaker, ma'am? Laura Nicastri. Is she here? She is, and she's on the bottom of the that's list. That's fine. Let me, what did, let me find the number. Um, she was added on at the bottom of the list. Yes, that's fine. Go ahead, ma'am. Thank you. And, and just to do the. Good evening, members of the board, I'm teachers. Sorry, I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry, ma'am. The attorney's interrupting you. Oh, I'm sir. sorry. I mean to interrupt. Uh, six, so six minutes, and there's uh, no objections from the assembly, correct? Yeah. I didn't hear anything, no. That's fine. Go ahead, ma'am. Good evening, members of the board, teachers, parents, and members of the public. I'm here today to address several educational concerns I have both as a teacher and as a parent. By the way, I am the very proud parent of that young lady that just spoke, and I am proud to call her my daughter. 21 years ago, I graduated with honors from Barry University and walked into what I knew would be a lifelong career. I was young, passionate, and motivated ready to make an impact on all who crossed my classroom door. Most new teachers are, but what they aren't is experienced. No amount of collegiate learning can prepare you for what you will encounter along the way in ways of experience. 
I knew my career choice would not make me rich, but I was fairly confident that I would survive. Now I have a family, bills, parental responsibilities, health issues, and retirement concerns that which I did not have 20, when I was a 22 year old. The STEP system guaranteed me a financial gain each year, although minimal. I was also fairly certain that the step increases would be adjusted as the cost of living soared. Boy, was I wrong. The cost of living adjustments are non-existent. My salary was frozen for over four years, and what little my income has increased amounts to pennies. And now, as a final slap in the face, those steps that I banked on are gone. How is it possible that I have been in a classroom full time for 16 years and make just $3,000 more than a teacher stepping foot in the classroom for the first time? Furthermore, how is it that the same new teacher earning just about what I do instantly qualifies for a $10,000 scholarship based on the SAT scores he or she received in high school? Meanwhile, I had to have the College Board archives searched for my SAT scores from 1989 and also received a highly effect and also have to receive a highly effective rating on my most recent teacher evaluation that which is based mainly on the performance of my former students from an inclusion special education class as my kiddos would say this is bogus what should be determining a teacher's bonus how about the extra 20 hours that I put per week? Because without it, I would not be able to meet the needs of my students or the requirements placed on me. Or what about the endless devotion of the teachers such as my daughter's band teacher, Mr. Cox, who graciously allows my daughter to still be part of the band, even though she lost the selective when her schedule was abruptly changed to combine two smaller classes into one large class? When does she learn how to play the instrument? after school, on the teacher's time. What about my daughter's math teacher, who creates much of her own materials because what she needs to teach her curriculum is not provided to her by Miami-Dade County Public Schools, yet 100% of her students score proficiently on all state exams and surpass all other school scores every single year. Funny enough, this master teacher is not eligible for best and brightest scholarship bonus because she did not attend school in the United States, and therefore, she doesn't have an SAT score. <coughs> Never mind that if she had taken it, she would have probably gotten a perfect score. But coincidentally, the date of the next available test falls after the deadline for turning in the documents. Then there's my daughter's science teacher, who stays after school to help students with their science projects, manages all registrations for the district fair, enabling a STEM future for our kids. And then when the school-based judging is over, he donates his time to Miami-Dade County Public School Science and Engineering Fair, all on their own time. These teachers are the best and brightest. They deserve compensation. The other thing I want to briefly address is my dissatisfaction with the intimidation tactics that have become a staple of this administration. Back in 2009, and many times thereafter, this issue was taken up at board meetings. It was clearly addressed by school board member Ms. Hatman, as you will hear in this clip. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Carvalho, um, unfortunately, this complaint has come before us uh, before where uh, some parents, if you recall, a couple of meetings ago, one of my items, the parents were all called and asked what it was they were going to speak about. And many, of, and many of them felt that they were just being discouraged to come and speak. And I mentioned at the time that I thought it was very bad policy. And I think what these ladies are referring to is extremely bad policy because there was no need to have their principal on a speakerphone speaking to one of your assistants to find out what it was that they were going to speak. I do believe that it, it, it looks a lot like intimidation. For the record, that's a very good um, 
No, it's stopping right there. It's Dr. Perez, it was not me. Okay, thank you, yes. sorry for that. I believe it's Dr. Perez's voice, right, Dr. Perez? Yes, thank you. Okay, I shouldn't go too much over, but it did take about seven seconds of yes, my time. Yes, and they will okay. do the seven seconds, please. Thank you. Yes. Many of the speakers here today will tell you about how they were called to the office, visited by an administrator, interrupted during class, or scheduled to visit with the Labor Relations Department, which, by the way, never showed up. Many will tell you that they have been harassed, intimidated, or coerced into retracting their speak time. Why is this terrible practice allowed to continue? These issues, teacher pay at poverty levels, ridiculous bonuses offered that are clearly discriminatory, and the demoralization of our once appreciated profession by unjustifiable intimidation and harassment techniques are not just issues that warrant Tallahassee's attention. Your time is up, but you can wrap it up, yes. I'd like to know what Miami-Dade County Public Schools will do for its teachers, or for that matter, what UTD has done or will do. Hear us, hear me. I am a Miami-Dade County Public School System teacher, and I am worth more. Thank you, ma'am, thank you.